How's everybody doing? I'm plug this fender real quick. I didn't realize I could, so keep your charge. Go make some baits. My buddy wanted to... Uh, Alright, I sold a bag of baits, and I wasn't real happy with the, the color. They like, got darker. So we're going to try it again, and uh, if they, they turn out the way I want them, we're probably just going to send them to the, the dude for free. We won't even tell him. We'll just ship him out and let him show up at his house. Like, what the hell? <laughs> so what it is, is it's glow truce pepper. So, um... We're gonna get some DOP chartreuse. Whoops. We need some stuff with that. Going back to the first camera angle, just for, I like to switch it up a little bit. Got this one over here, that was the last video's angle. Move these molds, I was using to hold it still, so I have my cabinet here. And, uh, remember what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, man. That, it might not be over there. I gotta find this stuff real quick. I don't even use it that much. I don't know why it would... Somebody told it! No, there it is. Oh, it, it, was, it was a snake. It would have bit me in the face. Yo. Cabinet's getting a little... I don't know what you guys are watching, but sorry. I've, I've got it right here. I got stuff stacked on stuff on stuff on stuff. Trying to do more videos. Here we go. Boom. Ultra Green V. This stuff was not, it wasn't that expensive, but it wasn't that cheap either. Um, glow's pretty good. I made these, uh, it's a half a cup. We're gonna do it for about two and a half minutes. What? Um, yeah, about two and a half minutes. And, uh, that was the other one. That was right the first time. Comes out. Now this, this, I've never used any other kind of glow powder, but this stuff is heavy. Um, it's heavy. It like, you know, you put powder in and it floats. You got to stir it. This stuff sinks straight through. So I'm assuming, you know, any amount is going to make the paint heavier than it would normally be. Um, like I said, we're making the backups. We're just doing this pepper. So, I don't need the rod inserts. Oh, we're also going to need point one five. Yeah, I keep saying I don't do informational videos. Point one five and point three five black glitter. I have both hex. Both are in hex. Hey, you guys be nice to each other. But if you have the ability to get like maybe one hex and one square, the more like, you know, it, looks, it, it gives it some depth. Uh, I always try to use two different sizes of glitter. But if you can even maybe mix up the uh, shape, it might be even cooler. I like coarse cut. I think it gives it a real natural look. Turn the shop fans and stuff on. Vince says it doesn't do you much good if you don't turn it on, does it? Um, I actually talked through the heating process. Normally I, uh, normally I pause it because it's kind of boring. I'm just gonna stand here and ramble. And, so, mm, you know, drink coffee. But it's only got 30 seconds left, so it is definitely going to need stirred and cooked again. I always try to stir my plastic saw, like when I'm warming it, when I'm heating it up. Um, you ever made soup? You know, just the bottom's colder, or bottom is hotter than the top, so I try to stir it. That way I don't possibly burn the bottom. I probably should have put some heat stabilizer in that too, since it's just chartreuse. Last batch, I don't have it, like I said, it was for an order, and I uh, stacked the guy's bonus bag pretty good. But it, it had like a doll. I think I put some, uh, I don't know. I think that actually had some green in it too. Like some baby bass or something like that. Cause it wasn't like that traditional chartreuse color. So let's use what everybody says is the wrong tool. Okay, so three and a half minutes is a little long. Well, no, it said 390. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Now it's down to three. It said 353 then 347. So I know it hit at least 350 once. See, 
fans help. You got to turn them on though. Actually, hold on. Let me put the uh, the panel on the window. I wonder why it stank. That's great. You got to get into the habit of doing that. Even if you got the equipment, if you don't turn it on, it doesn't be no good. So we're gonna. Ah! Um. This is why I'm not wearing my new dead on hoodie because it would probably already have shit on it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Why not twenty-two? You gotta wait. There's like three chicken hawks out there earlier. I'm not just gonna open the door and let you go. Yeah, Daryl, you gotta put the other stuff in it first also. But let's see how that chartreuse looks because it's gonna darken when I put glitter in it. That looks like it's pretty good. Um, so actually, we'll do this. Um, I bought this just messing around. I'm gonna check it out. Um, it does work pretty good, but it's like I said, it's, it's light activated. Watch, you'll see this stuff just sink. It is falling in. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Um, I'm gonna give them like a piece and a half, eighth and a half. That should give it some pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. There it goes. Now it's just sinking into it. So yeah, eighth and a half. Then here is our point three five. I try to write stuff down um, as I go. This is kind of a one-time batch, but I will. It's, it's also pretty easy to remember. We're gonna give it a. Fat eighth of the 15, and then a fat eighth, point three five. Or no, that was a point three five, and this is the 15. We'll give it a fat eighth to each. I always try to clean out my spoon by my fan because these little particles will get will get into your lungs. Joke with my wife that when they do my autopsy, it's gonna be like a glitter bomb going off. Yeah, see, and that was what it did last time. If you guys could see that, it, it got a lot darker um, as soon as I stirred that up. So I, I feel better now because I was like, man, that color is really off for Glow Truce Pepper. But yeah, that is definitely what happened. Um, it's just that much glitter is gonna really darken up your chartreuse. And I mean, I could probably sit here and dump chartreuse into it until it got lighter again. Maybe, I don't even know, but I'm not because your bait gets a little, your, your, your class of saw to pigment ratio starts getting kind of kooky. I'm gonna give this like 30 seconds and I'll probably actually stop it after about 20. When you're, uh, that's still hot, dude. When your um, class of saw to pigment ratio starts getting a little close, you can get some real goopy, not great feeling baits. So we're gonna stay on the other side of that and not, not do that. I do have Char Lime now, so I can start, really this is supposed to be like Char Lime Glow, it was Glow Truce, um, no it was Glow Truce, not Char Lime. All right, put our glitters back. I like to try to keep the shop clean, and clean as I go. As I said, I, uh, I cooked that, it's 350. 360, it's not too, too bad. So we'll scrape it, give her a good twist, and uh, into the vacuum chamber we go! There are certain, I know the gloves, I need to do it all the time, but at least there are certain things that I absolutely do do. Do do. Um, I put the gloves on before, like putting stuff into the vacuum chamber, taking stuff out of the vacuum chamber. Um, handling hot molds and things like that. I was saying something, can't remember what it was, but that's all right. Um, yeah, we got it in the vacuum chamber. We'll let it do that for a minute, a couple of minutes. I've heard of people leaving it in for like 15, 20 minutes. I've never done that. I mean, it starts to solidify after a minute. Doesn't really make any sense. You're not really doing nothing. Um, I've forgotten them in there and not left the pump on, but left them under full pressure for like two hours. You come back and it's solid with a bunch of weird bubbles. Um, yeah, we'll vacuum this out, heat it back up just a little bit, and we'll shoot one. I'm working on ideas for 
covering up the rest of the you can't really see it because you're on a mount but there's a drying rack over here that i need to wrap this one's finally wrapped but the chickens keep climbing on it so i gotta do something for the poke holes in it pretty stoked on this i like the angle better before this shelf it set up a shelf and it, it saw you can see the whole bench and me and it, it i think it gave a better a better view of what we're doing um cleaning up some dust this thing pumps up good and quick yeah she's really going i wrapped this if you've ever seen travis's next level lab um that's where I got the idea. He wraps a lot of his stuff, and it does it. They're not airtight, but it control it, it like you know path of least resistance. We got fans in the top. This curing rack is wrapped just to keep dust out of the baits. Um, if you've got tacky baits, any dust in the air is going to land, and it, it's going to dull your shine. Um, so mold. Is, that's not too hot. I got the mold and the injector on the griddle because it's only like 50 something degrees outside. There's another thing, griddle. Um, Get these molds up to ten your injector too. Not too hot. I worry about melting my O-ring in here before. Um, haven't done it, or like your blending block gets too hot, you can melt an O-ring. But warm molds definitely matter. If you don't have a a uh, griddle, you just get some plastic all hot, like 340, 50, 60 degrees. Shoot it. You might have to do it two or three times to get that mold to suck up all that heat. But as soon as they're they're um, cool enough or not even cool enough as soon as they're solid enough to take out you pop them out remelt them and pour them again do that like three times fast and uh, you'll be good to go the mold will be up to temperature and then as long as you're not waiting a real long time in between shoots uh, you should stay hot enough to just keep on pumping them out that's it if it's cold where you're at I'm in southwest Ohio it was just winter and I was out here pouring it was like 20 30 degrees and I had to do that kind of stuff usually with the hot plate um, yeah, we're about 300. Usually with the hot plate, by the time you get your... I put it at about 250. Um, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to cook this for 25 seconds. By the time... Um, these are solid, so back and front doesn't matter. These, when you shoot them... Anyway, I got off track. Uh, I put my griddle about 250, and by the time I've got my color, my plastic's all ready, my mold, and my injector are hot enough to shoot. Um, this is going to be a solid color, so I'm not worried about the, the divot. On this mold, though, because of the way it sits, if you want to do a laminate, you shoot your bodies, and then you actually have to turn them so that one solid color is facing up and one's facing down and shoot your bellies. This is the 2-inch Epic backup. Um, because of the way the mold lays in there, you can see how the tail's flat, and on your bait, you want that tail to be sideways. Um, so you lay it with a solid color in the top and a solid color. Here's one right here. And it's, that's a really crappy example. That's why I didn't get in a bag. Here's one that's a pretty crappy example too. Um, but one side's blue, one side's white with a core. So you turn it so that when it's on your jig, your tail sits like that. So with this particular mold, you shoot your bodies and then flip the way they sit in the mold to shoot your cores. Get that back up. Um, you're good to go. Yeah, that's pretty hot. Always careful to very, very careful when I stir it. I like to stir it like kind of do this because it gets the glitter back or the the flake back up into the plastisol and it also kind of stirs it up a bit but it's really easy for it to come up over this piece and really mess your thumb up which I have done so we'll get our injector sometimes if you're warming stuff up that's why you need two gloves because you're holding your injector uh and it's hot <laughs> so we'll give her a little give her a goose to clear our injector. This is a bug molds injector and it has got a pretty big spout on it. Um, so you gotta be careful with it because when it does come out, it's 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 a doozy. All right, we're gonna top off our sprue. Boop. Pour that back into the plastisol. When I do put the stuff for my injector back into the 
plastisol, something else I try to do is um, like shoot it onto the side so it runs down. That's hot! Um, I just stuck my finger in on accident. Shoot it into the side. If you go straight down into the middle, it's gonna churn it up and make bubbles, and then it's just gonna be harder for you to get good clean baits on your next shoot. Because obviously I'm not gonna degas this every single time I make a, a, a run. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna shoot this, I'm gonna take my rag and cover up my my container so or my cup so it stays as warm as possible. Um and then I'm gonna as soon as this is cool enough to take out, I'm going to take them out and pop them up and shoot another batch. So I'm gonna pause it because it could take a minute or two and we'll be right back. All right, I think it should be all right. It's a little warm, but like I said, it's solid enough that we can take them out to get onto the next. If you see that little dent in it? Um, little dent, that is temperature. That's the mold sucking, class, or the, the mold sucking in the plastic saw as it cools. What we get. That is glow, glow truce pepper, and I'm not gonna turn. I mean, I can turn everything. I won't probably won't glow right now because uh, there's too much light. It has been charged, but this stuff glows pretty well. Like just a few minutes under it, and it'll glow. Um, I'm high, I'm holding under the light. I've got low watt LEDs though to try to save save power. Yeah, you guys aren't gonna get to see that at all. Whatever. That's cool, let me hang him up on the rack. And we'll shoot another one real quick. Yeah. Um, so, if you order baits from me, well, I mean, if you know about molds, then, and you order baits from me, you'll notice that most of my baits come in the same pack. Like this, this bait makes 12, and these baits come in 12 packs, and that's not a mistake. Uh, that way, each run I do is a pack. So every time I do a shoot, I just made a pack of baits. Um, you know, you get three molds, you can make three baits. Uh, right now, uh, I try to treat this like a loaded gun too. You got hot plastic saw, you do that, and you can literally disfigure yourself. Um, that's no fun. Um, yeah, so usually it's, it's however many... Um, that unless it's like a really small amount most of the molds I've been trying to get a hold of I'm gonna do this for about 22 seconds most of the molds I try to get a hold of have a de decent amount like I said that's there's 12 in this mold and 12 is a decent number for a pack the ice spikes come in 20 packs because there's 20 mold 20 cavities to the mold um singles uh bigger baits usually come in singles if they're real big the four inch we do uh Two. I just picked up another one of those, so two packs. Um, same with the six inch AI step tail, they come in two packs. Wow. Um, sweet. So I just dropped that, and I didn't break my container, but man, I'm glad I had clothes on, because this shit got all over me, bro. That's the first time I've ever done it, believe it or not. Not like I've been doing this my whole life. I've been doing it a year, and that's the first time I've ever dropped the cup, taking it out of the microwave. And that's a bummer because that color looks spot on, man. I'm really stoked on how that color turned out. Whoop! Let me get my cup. Where'd you go? Oh wow, way over here. Well, we still got a little bit left, guys. We're not totally out of the game. We're gonna, um, well, we're gonna peel this and heat it up and shoot another batch while the shit I just spilled all over the shop dries, and then we'll clean it up. Got these, so we'll cut them up and add them back into there. Um, yeah, no worries, man. Shit happens. Whatever. Nobody got hurt. That's the good thing. Chickens are all to the left of me, sitting in front of the door because I want to go outside. They weren't behind me or anything. Just caught some of it. Um, it did start to melt this though, which is a bummer because that's new. Um, <laughs> but it's replaceable um, and it's clean, so we can remelt this, peel this off, and uh, throw it back in the pot or the cup. 
It didn't break my cup, that's always a good bonus. This, this on the other hand, it landed on the fiber. It's not clean. And we'll go in here to be scrapped. This kind of stuff, this is a uh, cover. For, oh, it's coming off. It's a cover for the chicken coop, but it's like a weird UV protectant. Um, it, luckily, it didn't burn it. It did make quite a mess on it, though, so we'll clean that up later. Glove. Table. I, I try to. I know I keep saying I'll clean it up later. Uh, my chickens will get into this if I don't kind of do it now. So we're going to heat this back up. Probably about 35 seconds and see what it looks like. The real crap part is it's like down my pants and it's on my boot. Like all over my... It's, they're leather boots so it should peel right off. But fun, fun. I don't know about the pants though, man. Lisa might get a little mad about that. These aren't cheap, insulated. Oh, this will come off. <laughs> In her washer. No, I'm just joking. I'll peel it off before I throw it down. <laughs> um, I'm just waiting on this to cook. And while I do, I'm kind of picking these little bits I can see on the floor because if I do not eat chicken, definitely. And it just kind of, it's dusty down here, so it's just popping off. I'm probably just going to sweep. Yeah, the floor is a bit dusty, so it's peeling right off, which is a good thing. No worries. Let's shoot some bait. Another reason why you want to stir when you're reheating. Um, like I said, it, it tends to heat from the bottom out. Yeah, you guys probably can't, but even when I clean this off because of that glow powder, it's got a grittiness to it, and you can actually hear it. It sounds like there's sand in there. Um, another 20 seconds. Uh, lost my train of thought. Oh, well. I forget what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, that mold's definitely hot enough. Let's pull that down, actually. I don't want it too hot. Ooh, toasty. That's crazy, like I said, guys. That's the first time I've ever had that happen. Nutty. Oh, well. I know I probably said it well like six times. Where are we at now? That's going to be a little too hot. Yeah, 350. So I'll swirl it around here, which does, you know, put the glove on first. Probably both of them, too, because that injector's warm. Same bait, I'm just gonna show you guys one more shoot of it, then we'll call it. So once again, I do have holes drilled in my table, holds my container like that, so I can get right down into the corner when you start getting down to the bottom of, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. Start getting down to the bottom, it gets it down into that corner where you can get as much as possible. purged our injector we'll take our shot hold pressure is a little hotter so i'm going to hold it just a little bit longer than i probably normally would also it's the only mold i'm not um you know rushing to get more molds done i'm not trying to shoot two or three molds it's the only one so we can let it sit for a second i like to twist so that and give a little pull so the uh sometimes you have problems where when you come up pulls the screw out something like this it doesn't matter but on something like that where you've got multiple cavities let's say you do your first one and when you pull your injector out your sprue comes with it and you go to shove it in there you can clog the injector if it's a laminate it could mess up your laminate it could clog the whole piece and make it to where you don't get um, any shoot at all I've had some where you open it up and it's just the sprue and like a chunk of the head because <laughs> um, that, that kind of stuff happens Man, yeah, that's nutty. Well, shit happens, I guess, right? You just, uh, you just probably never see it because most people don't put that kind of crap in their video. You know, we're going to leave it in. I don't take that stuff out. Because um, this isn't really like, a, I mean, it's just me documenting me making baits. Showing you guys how the baits that you order off the website or could possibly order, hopefully, off the website or off the Instagram page. Uh, show you how it's made. Show you what we do. Show you how we come up with stuff. Gives people an idea of our colorways and how we do stuff. I think I made a video for this. We just did these. I got a little flashing on this one, but that's all right. It's always random black glitter, man. 
no matter what, I always find, and I try really hard to clean out everything, but yeah, it's like some chartreuse and some mako with some hollow flake. The, uh, it'd be really good for that dark, that dark, dirty water. This is actually pretty warm because it was on the griddle and I don't know if the griddle get too hot, so we've got a minute. Um, been running remounts. Like trying to get like, we like to do freebie bags and stuff like that, and bonus promo bags and bonus bags, but I like to do it with remelt because it uses up my pucks and it lets me experiment with some stuff. So here's, I'm just waiting on this mold to cure. Honestly, I forgot to show you guys some stuff. I, I think it's pretty neat. Um, this is my first, I think I made a video of that. First triple pour with the divider cup. I have a triple divider cup and I was trying to do two dark colors and some silver that in the middle. Came out pretty good. This was one of the better ones. You know, when you're open pouring with divider cups, it's always different. There are ways to get similar, similar looks, but for the most part, it's all different. There we go. Um, that's still pretty hot. I think we'll be all right though. Open her up. Ding, doing, doing. I like this mold a lot. I said these are just solid because it's a glow truce, um, but they come with rods. Um, you stick your rod in like this. Yeah, I know what you guys are all thinking. Um, Put your rod in there and it shoots the body just this this and then you take the rod out and shoot your core color a little hotter and it will give you the tail and the core um yeah you know like these so it's like you shoot that with the rod in there and it gives you this outside core or this outside body and then you shoot the take the rod out and shoot your internal color fills that hollow section up and gives you your tail Super cool, uh, you know. I think Josh over at AI is the first person to start doing core shots. He was kind of like the innovator of it. Um, it's been widely adapted because it's just a really cool way to be able to get some other other colors in. But you know me, I love you know giving credit to people who innovated stuff um, and to kind of you know so people don't forget where we came from. Epic did a great job with the core shot though. Um, these look great. These are copy killers, man. They were just, they are copy killers. You can see that dual, how that, uh, if you guys can see it, that two different sizes of glitter really gives it some, some definition and some depth. Um, I like it. I like shooting these a lot. I'm trying to get a couple more of these. They'll still come in 12 packs, but I'll just be able to make more packs at once. I don't believe, um, there won't be any change in price because I don't inflate the price now. I don't think because I only have one mold and it takes me a long time to make orders that that should relate to you guys and cost. I'm the only employee, so it's not like, you know. And then when I we get ahead, we get more molds. Uh, when we notice something sells a lot, we buy more molds to compensate and try and get them out as quick as possible. But that does not translate. Some people like to say, oh, well, this took this much time. So it's worth this much money, which is true to an extent. If it took you that much time because you don't have the equipment needed to, f to to meet the demand that you have for what you're making that shouldn't translate to higher cost for the customer you should take that hit until you can afford to have the equipment to meet the demand and then your prices stay the same and people aren't like what the hell <laughs> but uh cool we're gonna edit this together that was kind of neat you guys got to see me have a shop accident for the first time i've ever had that kind of accident luckily nobody was hurt did have gloves on but i did uh probably ruin this shirt this the big hole right here didn't already ruin it but um yeah another reason why i'm not wearing my brand new super comfy super awesome dead on plastic sweatshirt is because if i was it would be a shop rag right now because it's white um or at least the logo is so yeah there we go guys we're all done we made two runs of baits it's the same bait um trying to build up do different videos do stuff I this is what I do I just kind of am turning the camera on while I'm in the shop doing what I do so it, it's it's at home so sometimes I only do a couple of colors sometimes the buddy's like hey can I get some of these and I'll run them real quick in between other orders or sometimes I'm just screwing around because there are no orders some of these videos might just be me doing stuff in the shop I'll put it up where you guys can see the whole shop and we'll uh, we'll just hang out you know
it's kind of a it's like a video diary of my shop life I guess more than anything it's fucking 30 minutes long um wow I'm gonna end it so thanks guys for stopping by watching me spill a cup plastic all over the shop and myself and um hope you enjoyed the video you can do the whole like and subscribe stuff if you're into it I appreciate it and um yeah I, this is my full time job, so I'm out here every day. So if I feel like it, you guys might get a little short video every day. I don't like to. This 30 minute thing is is uh, is actually really long for me. I don't like to take up a lot of people's time. I like to get on, do a little stuff, and then get out. Um, but you know, we're trying different stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and listen to me ramble on like an idiot. And uh, be safe uh, if you're on the water. Stay safe in tight lines. If you're in the shop, gloves and be safe. We'll see you later. <laughs>